Sorry about the lighting, I'm filming this a bit later than I wanted to. This is my Doctor Who season 17 review, you know the score by now. Click up in the corner to see every other season review as part of my marathon. Yeah, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Uh, Destiny of the Daleks. It's a very good story, it's a very good opener to the season and the season starts off really, really well. Even though right at the start it does well and truly fuck up everything we know about regeneration at that point. The CGI was really good and I loved how it was essentially a direct sequel from Genesis of the Daleks. I love direct sequels in Doctor Who, I think it worked really well with Spearhead from Space to Terror of the Autons and I think it works even better here. This is one of the first Doctor Who stories I actually watched. It was, it was really good, I really did enjoy it. City of Death. It was the first story filmed abroad, obviously it was filmed in uh, Paris. I did want to get a picture of the Mona Lisa, I actually printed one off and it said this is a fake on it. But the torrential rain the other day in England, it got soaked and they had to chuck it. I haven't had a chance of reprinting it out, so sorry. Oh sorry! I loved the first scene that the Doctor and Scarlioni shared, well Scarlioni or Scaroth or whatever you want to say. I loved that first scene with them and the whole story was a quite, well, a the whole story is quite a good idea. And then we get the creature from the pit. This is a story that I really, really, really wasn't looking forward to um, as part of my marathon. It's one that I've never really liked. It's always been right at the bottom of my um, episode ranking. But it's grown on me. I did I did enjoy watching it again. Um, it's certainly not up there with the first two of the season. But it's not that bad. I thought John Leeson was much better as K-9 as opposed to David Riley. And even though the monster did look like a giant green penis, um, it, still, it did still grow on me. I'm talking about a big green penis growing on me. And I love the way Romana took control of the bandits. Um, I thought it was really funny and it showed her, uh, it showed her intelligence really, really well. Um, I like that when that, I like it when that happens. Um, so yeah. Nightmare of Eden. This is definitely not a very good story. This is another one where it wasn't that high in my ranking. I Before, I probably would have ranked this higher than the Creature from the Pit, but now... Creature from the... Uh, Nightmare of Eden was just so boring. It was very slow. The plot was quite boring. The monsters were quite rubbish. They did serve a part of the story, which I understand, but they still weren't very good. They didn't really speak. It wasn't... They weren't the villains. They were just like there and I think Triss should go to Specsavers because his glasses don't look really good. The Horns of Nymon, I thought it was so funny when um, the Doctor gave the CPR to K9 at the start. It was really funny, it really did make me laugh. I thought the Nymons were very 60s style designs but again the story is very slow and boring just like um, Nightmare of Eden. There's a bit more of a exciting story to it so I probably would put it a bit higher but not by far. And then we've got on to Sharda. Now for Sharda I I bought the new one, the like, reconstruction or remake or whatever you want to call it, um, and I did enjoy it. There was a few sort of gripey bits that I wasn't too keen on. The whole format being more like a movie, it's written in a way where it works so much better if it was in different parts. So when it's all just shoved together as an omnibus sort of thing, it just doesn't work as well as it probably should have done. It had a pre-title sequence, not something I was expecting. By the time the titles rolled around I was like, what? I didn't realise that the titles hadn't played. Um, and talking about the titles, they were remastered, they were rescored. Again, it's not something I really like. They put the Hartnell music over it, and I don't know why they did it. It was probably there's probably some sort of reason behind it, but I I wasn't too keen on it. I'd rather than I'd rather them just keep the normal Tom Baker's one. I watched it on my phone, paid 17 quid for it. Probably weren't wasn't worth 17 quid. Um, but yeah, uh, the animation was okay. There was times where you just think, God, this is a heap of shit. And then there was times where, it was, where you thought, yeah, this is really good. So in general, yeah, it was all right. The story was quite good. I did enjoy it. It gave you quite a bit more insight into the Time Lords as a species. I, I feel like you can connect with the characters a lot more if you know more about the backgrounds. And that final scene with Tom Baker, where he's, uh, where he's old and... But he's come back. And I think... I, I do really like that. The whole cast who came back, I think the fact that they came back shows their dedication to the show and I think it shows a lot about them as actors 
did really like it. But yeah, so that's that's season 17. That's season. That's the season in a nutshell. Um, in general, it was all right. It had a really good start. The middle around probably starting with Creature from the Pit all the way to Ones of Nine One. Not so good. Sharda was better. Yes, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, drop it a like. Um, subscribe if you're new as well. And yeah, so see you in season 18. God, this is Graham Williams' last one. I've just remembered that. God, when John Nathan turns in. I don't like John Nathan Turner. <sighs> Already smooth ass now. Oh, I'm gonna miss this place. If you're wondering why I just put the posters up, because we're moving out, so we're gonna have a lot of people coming in to see it, hopefully. Um, and behind these, there was a lot of marks on the wall because I used to have a bit of a temper. What's that? Thank <laughs> you.